Here's John Moore. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be back here again. Uh, once again, my name is John Thornton. I'm from the Chicagoland area. In Chicago, I operate a mobile drivability diagnostic business. Got about 500 shops or so that use me for a wide variety of things. I'll tell you that for a couple of reasons. One, so you know what I do during the day. And two, far more importantly, a lot of what I talk about, like for example, VW uh, this afternoon, uh, will include theory, how systems are supposed to work, but also we have to be able to take the theory and make it fly in the diagnostics. Agreed? You know, I don't want to know theory just to know theory. I want to know theory so I can help, help me diagnose. So please, if you have a question, as I'm going through the presentation this afternoon, just raise your hand. It might take me a minute to realize your hand's up. But be patient. If you have a question, I'll do my best to uh, answer it. My goal this afternoon is very, very simple. I want to discuss how VW Audi GDI works. This gentleman made a comment. I didn't even pay him to say this. He was working on a Q7 that ultimately had a high-pressure pump failure, and you notice as you, in part of your testing, your low pressure was very high, close to 90 PSI. That's a typical strategy that a lot of OEs use. If they see that the high pressure is down, it's too low, they will do what to There's the low high pressure? high pressure down there, which we haven't really talked about, but it's desired and actual, and you can see that they're pretty close, correct? So it doesn't appear to be a high pressure concern at this moment in time anyway. I'm hoping if you look up here, there's something you don't like at 30 miles per hour. I have a collection of what I call dummy high pressure pumps. And some are good and some I've taken off of vehicles. But I'm always interested in how the system reacts to no pressure. So when I talk about a dummy pump, I have lots of Hitachi high pressure pumps. And I take a Hitachi high pressure pump and I take the N276 connector and I disconnect it from the vehicle's high pressure pump and I plug it into my dummy pump. You hear what I'm just doing right here? Now, of course, I will not have any high pressure anymore because I have an inlet valve that's normally, normally open. But the reason I just don't disconnect the connector and hope for the best is that PCMs can identify what pretty darn quickly? Opens and shorts. My goal is to sneak up on the PCM. I've kind of wrapped up the, the two liter BPY section as we talked about some of the components. And what I did on, on that page, as you can probably guess by looking, I've summarized the key measuring value blocks that you and I would go to for GDI diagnostics. So even though I just did a VW Audi, the size of the Teflon seal is a typical procedure with other manufacturers as well. Gentlemen, ladies, thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure to be here.